Hey, what's up, everybody? It's DJ Fanatic from DJ Fanatic Beats. I thought I'd do a quick, a uh, quick video of an overview of performance rights organizations, uh, basically what they are, uh, your benefits of them, and being a musician or a music cre creator or a producer, basically the value of it. Just a quick overview. I'm not going to go too deep into these. Um, as you can see, you know, just looking at my screen, there's a lot of info, whatever. I just thought I'd break down the three major ones and just kind of share that with you. Um, I'm not going to just go ham on it and just dissect each one. Just giving you an overview of it. And uh, before I begin that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that sub button. I'm on my way moving up probably to about 300 um 300 subs so climbing slowly but surely but climbing and climbing is better than being stagnant so i appreciate everyone that sub subscribes and also likes and comments on the videos and if anything i leave out on this video uh please feel free to comment because it's it's actually a lot you can learn about these organizations and you know there's a lot of musicians out there and there's a lot of musicians that don't really know about them and I remember when I didn't know much about them, so here we go. Um, as you're looking at my screen here, basically you probably read it already. Um, performance rights organization, uh, sometimes they call them pros. They're also known as a performing rights society. Uh, they basically, you know, collect royalties, you know, between copyright holders, uh, which is yourself, or either you're an artist, you know, singer, or rapper, or whatever and the parties, and producer of course, and the parties who wish to use copyrighted works publicly in locations such as shopping and dining venues. Uh, legal consumer purchase of works such as buying CDs from a music store confer private performance rights. Pros usually only collect royalties when uh, use of work is incidental to an organization's purpose. While royalties for works essential to an organization's purpose such as theaters and radio are usually negotiated directly with the rights holder. Uh, basically, uh, when your music is um, played in like venues and shopping areas, um, these organizations collect uh, money for you because it's your music, and they. I know ASCAP because I'm an ASCAP member. Shout out to ASCAP. Um, I thought I'd do this video, by the way, since I just got back from the ASCAP Expo out in L.A. this year, and it was outstanding. I may do a separate video on that alone, just about my experience there, because uh, it's like one of the highlights of my year. So, um, but I know ASCAP um, does the direct deposit uh, based on your registered works, which is awesome. Um, and they basically look out for you, because, um, you know... You put your hard work into the music and you should be compensated for it. And for artists that don't really know about it, I know like everybody's on a different level. There's a lot of different artists that are just doing it as a hobby and just posting your music online or whatever, just sharing it with friends. But I also know some artists that do that and end up with tons of streams, like over 20,000 streams in days, and it's crazy. And imagine, you know, you actually registering that uh, with the performance rights organization, also monetizing it, whatever platform you put it on. And uh, let's say the song gets picked up like for a commercial or something. That'd be crazy, right? So that just shows the benefit of being a part of one of these organizations. So basically they collect royalties for you um, when they're played. Uh, you know, wish to use copyrighted works publicly in locations such as uh, legal consumer purchase of works, such as buying CDs and music store, confer private performance. Okay, so basically, I was going to break them down. The first one, um, <laughs> look, in some countries, pros are called copyright collectives. I never knew that. Or copyright collective agencies. Copyright collective is more general than a pro, as it is not limited to performances and includes reproduction rights, organizations, whatever. Uh, I'm going to let, let
let you read all that. <laughs> History, activities, criticisms, whatever. Um, the first one that I mentioned earlier, um, ASCAP. Uh, basically, you can kind of figure out which one that you gravitate to or which one you, you like or whatever. Um, American Society, ASCAP, that's what it stands for. American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. Uh, basically, it's an American performance rights organization, PRO, that protects its members' musical copyrights by monitoring public performances of their music, whether via broadcast or live performance, and compensating them accordingly. Uh, basically, um, they monitor public performances. You know, there's tons of, let's say... I don't know, you got your song and <laughs> Drake ends up rapping somewhere your song or or your beat or whatever. They monitor that performance. Like from our producers out there, imagine you had, you know, a couple collaborations with another producer and you know, you had Drake on your beat. So that and he performed it outside. So that right there, you would have Producer splits and also the writer. Well, producers can be the writer as well, but you kind of have to go online and, and, and look at the actual form. But uh, basically, you have a split between a producer and also uh, Drake, the artist, because, you know, he wrote the lyrics or whatever. So, um, you know, you guys can comment on that if you want to go further with it, but that just kind of gives you an idea. And basically, the performance rights organization they would uh, monitor the performance and the music whether it's broadcast broadcast obviously is um, you know radio that's broadcast um, TV film that's broadcast uh, think of like anything that's like you know you can just actually look at the word broadcast let me click on there you check it out broadcast is the distribution of audio or video we're talking about audio right here, um, content to a dispersed audience via an electronic mass communications medium, but typically one is using the electromagnetic spectrum radio waves <laughs> in a one too many model. <laughs> what? <laughs> in a one too many. Broadcasting begin with AM radio, yeah, back in the day, whatever. We don't, I don't even know anybody who <laughs> listens to AM radio anymore. But you get the idea. Um, so that's what ASCAP um, is about. And we can go a little further with them. I gravitated to ASCAP mainly because it's, you know, it's a a collection of um, composers, authors, and publishers. I can go to their site here too for you to check it out. Uh, when you go to their site, you know, you can. I like this. When you go right to it, they have music creators. I write, compose, or publish music. That would be me. Music user. I, I use music in my business. So basically, the businesses can register here, and the creators can register here. It's real clean and simple. Why ASCAP? We are a professional organization of 660,000 songwriters, composers, and music publishers. Uh, you can register as a composer and a publisher that's the way I'm registered uh, that way you know you, you have uh, more control of your music um, you can publish yourself basically um, uh, it's composed and music publishers owned and run by its members I love that and the world leading leader in performance royalties advocacy and service for the music creators um, I just really did a lot of research and read all over this website uh, a couple years ago, actually. And I just like what I heard. Um, I'm not selling either one of these performance rights organizations. I just happen to gravitate to this one, uh, mainly because it's run by its members. I like that a lot. Um, and also the advocacy. I could go down to see, ask Congress to pass the Music Modernization Act, and there was a huge breakthrough about that recently. And inspiration, empowerment, and creative freedom define the unforgettable 20. Yeah, I like that. So whatever your style of music, you know, you do, whether you're artist 
or you're a producer, you know, all these different um, genres. And, you know, you go to About Us. We create music. ASCAP is a membership association of more than, I just read that, uh, composers and music, but we uphold the value of our members' music and help them thrive alongside the businesses that use their music every day. It's a strong statement right there. Um, let's see, the greatest names in music, thousands more in early stages of their career. Uh, that's Megan Trainer. Yeah, I saw that panel actually in, in, in person. Excellent panel. I I could go into detail on it. We are the only PRO in the U.S. owned and governed by our own members. There you have it. Um, this is the ASCAP payment system I mentioned earlier. Um, we license over 11.5 million ASCAP songs and scores to the businesses that play them publicly. Then send the money to our members as royalties. So that's royalties. It's basically um, a percentage of plays. It's like a you you have your song played somewhere and through whatever deal that they have you get a percentage of that and registering your songs and also um, being a part of this is good for you to get just get your music out there and also to protect you and, and bring you revenue you know especially money that you're not expecting you know because you'd be like oh man I did that song a long time ago and for my producers out there you know uh, especially for TV film, like that's essential to be a part of one of these performance uh, organizations because you want to make sure that you're compensated for your work when these get uh, picked up, you know, on, on film or whatever. I could go in further detail on that, but I'm not going to go too far with that. Um, let's see. We use cutting edge technology to process over 1 trillion performances every year, more than any PRO in the world. Uh, they they go in there now. Uh, get to know the writers and publishers on the ASCAP board of directors who are helping to build a stronger future in music. There's the advocacy I was talking, telling you about. They're committed to protecting the rights of the members and we work to elevate the voice of the music creator, build relationships with our allies in Congress and foster thoughtful policy making for the benefit of creator businesses and consumers alike i like that and here's like a background ascap was the first pro in the u.s i did not know that founded in 1914 um as the music business has evolved we evolved right along with it but we remain committed to protecting the livelihoods of songwriters composers and publishers that call ascap home yeah i didn't know that so producers you fall into you know the composer area but uh, you know i would like to consider myself a songwriter as well so sometimes producers fit into both of these um ascap team ascap employees are proud to be a part of community and music creators are supported collectively we are we are experts in the music and media business get to know us and then whatever your style and there's a press room annual report you want to go there check it out I'll click on that just to show you uh, that's the 2016 annual report why not we're shooting live not live I'm just recording my screen uh, let's see hey there's Wale by the way I'm in the DC area so shout out to Wale I didn't know you're an ASCAP man. By the way, if you see this, put a comment, man, <laughs> or just a thumbs up. I'll take, and I got beats for you too. Uh, let's see here. Look at that. 2016, the total revenue, 1.059 billion. Look at the revenue growth. You see that growth? That's crazy in one year. 45 million increase. 2016 domestic license revenue 759 million domestic license revenue ASCAP distribution growth 
88 cents of every dollar ASCAP collects goes back to our um, songwriter, composer, music publisher members as royalty. Look at that. 88 cents of every dollar that's collected goes back to the songwriter, composer, and music publisher. So basically, it's a good idea to be a part of a performance rights organization, as you can see. Uh, just moving on, the next one um, that I mentioned there are three main ones. Uh, the next one is broadcast, uh, excuse me, BMI is what they usually call it. It uh, stands for Broadcast Music Inc. Uh, basically, it's one of five United States performance rights organizations. Um, I didn't mention the other uh, two, but um, along with ASCAP, CSAC, I haven't heard of these actually. Uh, it collects license fees on behalf of songwriters, composers, and music publishers and distributes them as royalties to those members whose works have been performed. In fiscal year 2017, BMI collected more than $1.13 in licensing fees and distributed $1.023 billion in royalty. BMI's repertoire includes over 800,000 songwriters and 13 million compositions. So basically, they do the same thing. Um, I'm sure the business is structured a little different, but you get an idea of, you know, their numbers. Uh, BMI songwriters create music in many genres as well, ranging from mainstream pop and country to death metal and hip hop. BMI represents artists as such, such as you can see all the various artists they have. I know it's tons more than this, but this is probably a little dated too. Patti LaBelle, Selena, Demi Lovato, Fifth Harmony, Lil Wayne, Birdman, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Eminem, Nickelback, Evan, e ah, I remember that group, Maroon 5, Danny Elfin, Elfman, uh, it's Lincoln Park, so, all over, so you go to their site, you know, I just go to their about page just to kind of get a overview because this is a you know powerful section of their site um, about BMI was founded in 1939 so it's a little after ASCAP uh, by forward thinkers who wanted to represent songwriters in emerging genres like jazz blues and country and protect the public performances of their music operating on a nonprofit making basis BMI is now the largest music rights organization in the US and still nurturing new talent and new music um is it the largest i'm not sure but does that really matter whatever um so it's um uh, basically um emerging gen genres so like jazz that was when jazz was new so uh what they do we already went over that so BMI is the bridge between songwriters and businesses and organizations that want to play their music publicly. Publicly, As a global leader in music rights management, BMI serves as an advocate for the value of music, representing nearly 13 million musical works created and owned by more than 800. So basically the same thing as that. So, you know, you, get, you see what they do. Um, their role, you know, I like this. BMI supports its songwriters, composers, and publishers by taking care of an important aspect of their careers. Getting paid. So, yeah, definitely these are very important, um, especially when you start, you know, getting a lot of fans and a lot of notoriety, a lot of streams and you know, if you're especially if your music is being broadcast like radio or on TV, so definitely got to be a part of one of these. Uh, let me go back to ASCAP. I was going to show you something. But yeah, yeah, the expo. There we go. Yeah, I can actually go through a lot of this and just. Yeah, multi-platinum recording artist Neo and Jermaine Dupri joined I Create Music Expo. That was dope. I saw both of the, both of them, and it was just really good. Um, so back to BMI, uh, you can kind of look around both of their websites and see, you know, what you like about them, and 
just educate yourself about them. I read all of them um, and made my choice. And I think you can only register with one. Um, if I'm wrong, please forgive me and you can comment and correct me. But I think you can only register with one. Um, I know one, just register with one is, is um, what do you call it, um, necessary. So only one is necessary, really. Uh, BMI has ability to power music establishments, restaurants, live concerts, fitness club, and other music users with the most popular music in all genres. We also have an enduring commitment to innovation that brings our copyright owners, which is us, producers, composers, writers, artists, um, and licensees and new technologies to manage their music and their music use. So you can see their little app here. Looks like an app. International Marketplace. Working at BMI. Our inclusive culture makes us stronger. And if you want to apply to work for them, there you go. Click on that and see what they have. Uh, the third one is CSAC, which I totally forgot what it used to be called. So obviously what you see here, CSAC, originally the Society of European Stage Authors and Composers. It's good they just use the actor. <laughs> but I believe this is the smallest one. Um, let's see. It's a performance rights organization, pro in the United States. Since the organization stopped using its full name in 1940, it is no, now known exclusively as CSAC. CSAC was founded in 1930, making it the second oldest PRO in the United States, based in Nashville. Didn't know that either. CSAC deals with all aspects of business, from creation to licensing and administration. The company also has offices in New York, LA, and London, and it has 30,000 songwriters and over 400,000 compositions in its catalog. So this is the smallest of the three. I believe it is the youngest as well. Uh, just looking back, 1930. And what was BMI? BMI was... 1939. Ooh, so this came about after CSAC. So, CSAC touts its small size. If the phrase quality versus quantity ever mattered, CSAC is the place. While CSAC is the smallest of the three, the U.S. Performing Rights Organization size is its largest advantage. CSAC prides itself on developing individual relationships with both songwriters and publishers i like that i like that so yeah you go to your site you know you can check out all their uh information here and anything you're unfamiliar with man just get out there and you know dig in you know i didn't know a lot about these performance rights organizations i heard about them i didn't know why i should register and I believe they all cost a little something. Um, but think about, you know, the benefits of registering, especially when you're at a certain point with your music. Um, you can easily make that back. Uh, and you also got to be strong to invest in yourself, especially if you're in here for the long haul and, you know, you want to make music for the rest of your life. So. Why not, you know, be a part of something? I mean, invest in something. And, you know, if you believe in yourself. So, I think ASCAP was 100 bucks. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's join on camera. Well, live here. I'm a music creator. I want to join now. Type in the code here. It's just membership application. Oh. I think it gives you option later to join as well. Uh, see, it won't tell me the payment until I fill out all this stuff. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll leave for now because I'm already a member. But I think it's 100 bucks, either 100 or 50 100 probably for both. 
I mean, you know, as a writer, total as a writer and a, a publisher. Uh, let's see, BMI. I don't know how much BMI is. Advocacy videos, login. Creators. Let's just go to the front. Music Monday. Creators, music users. So we can join here. Um, facts. Facts. What extra services? Where's the, uh, how much it cost? Panels, workshops, showcase fees. So you kind of have to, I just wanted to give you guys the price. Join BMI. Join, join BMI. See, now BMI does it a little different. I didn't know this. You'll be signing a two-year agreement. You'll be signing a five-year agreement as a publisher. So ASCAP, once you pay, you're in there, and you don't. they don't charge you again. And I heard years ago it was free to join, or it was like 10 bucks, but it's a little different now. Um, but it looks like you get just a two-year agreement as a songwriter and a five-year agreement as a publisher and you may have to pay again didn't know that CSAC uh, I don't know how much CSAC is it might cost the lease uh, what time is it okay 1130 uh, let's see I didn't want to make this video too long I don't see it. Writers, publishers, how we pay. Facts. Why should I choose? Can a songwriter be a member of more than one? Po oh, there's a question we talked about earlier. A songwriter can only be affiliated with one performing rights organization at a time. Music publishers, however, can be affiliated with all three U.S. societies at the same time as they often represent songwriters at all three organizations. That makes sense. What does it cost to affiliate with CSAC? There are no fees or dues if you're offered a CSAC affiliation. Wow, if you're offered. So you have to be offered an affiliation, but there's no cost. So all of them have different um, benefits and whatnot. Um, and also, you know, for further um, education or educating yourself, you can, like, just Google, why should I join a performance rights? Let's do that right now. Benefits of PRO. Performance. Rights organization. Uh, let's see here. I'm just doing this just for the video because uh, let's see what is this? This made it possible to evaluate the financial. Why join a performance rights organization? So let's see what the first catch is. 
Taxi, I like Taxi. They're dope. Let's see what they got to say in their article. They write some pretty good blogs. Uh, what is a performance rights organization? We went over that. Uh, when do I need to join a performing rights organization? This is dope. You don't technically need to be a member of a PRO until your songs are being played on a radio or TV. But the PROs can help further your career if they like what you're doing. Now, that's a nice straightforward answer. Um, basically, a PRO, it's performing rights organization. So it's just whenever your stuff's broadcast and you want to be, you want to get your money for it. They protect you that way and look out for you do. Um, now, if you, if they like what you're doing, you know, they definitely want you to make money and they, they want you to succeed, especially like when you're a part, part of it. Um, so, and they have staff that you can email. They have tons of functions every year. They have extremely talented people doing what you do. I know a lot of producers are starting to watch my videos now. And I know a lot of um, artists are watching my videos now. And musicians and engineers I know as well. So, thank you. Uh, but, yeah. They have... Just being a part of that collective definitely can boost your career. Um, how can a performing rights organization help my career? Here we go. Uh, the PROs, if they believe in what you're doing, can help by introducing you to collaborators, publishers, a and &R, which stands for artists and repertoire, and other industry types. Um, just speaking on that, man, you have no idea how many people I networked with and met at the expo um, that actually I'm looking to collaborating with right now. Actually, a producer I met, um, <laughs> I met out there that, um, you know, I sent him some music and we're basically collaborating on some, some tracks now. And he happened, I believe he happened to win the iStandard showcase out there. You got me music. What's good, man? So, looking forward to it. Um, so, what else? Uh, publishers. Publishers, basically, you know, you send your music. They shop your music for, like, TV, film, basically. They publish your music to be put out in, in broadcast. Uh, A&R, they, they're the ones that look for talent, whether it's artists, songwriters, or producers and other industry types, you know, the in-betweens. Uh, they hold periodic showcases, like I mentioned, to feature new talent and hold workshops and seminars designed to educate and connect their members. So basically what I already said is just really dope to be a part of a collective of people that are doing things that you do. And a lot of, not a lot of time, but, you know, a lot of them are, Everyone's at different levels. There's ones up there with like tons of songs with major artists. And then there's those in the middle, you know, just getting a few, you know, deals and whatnot, like a few hits. Let's say an artist just got a song on the radio for the first time or a producer got a song on the radio for the first time or got a placement with a major artist for the first time. So... And there's those that no one ever heard of. So there's just different categories or whatever of where everyone's at. And imagine like all of them categories being in one, you know, workshop or seminar or an expo. So that is a benefit, you know, definitely to um, helping your career. So like I said, what is a performance rights organization? If you don't know by now, I'm getting tired, but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> look how they answer this. Great question. We get it all the time. A PRO, as they are often called, collects money owed to songwriters or producers for the public performance of their songs. Some examples would be radio play, placements of movies or TV shows, concerts, elevator music. Don't forget about elevator music. And that's not <laughs> just... It's 
anything played in the elevator. And even music on hold for phone system, heard about that too. These are all uses of the song that the writers get paid a performance royalty for and the PRO collects that royalty and distributes it to the appropriate people. The three PROs in the United States are ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. So oh, that's why I didn't hear about the other three. They're not in the United States. I mean the other two. Uh, so basically, they collect the royalties and distribute. Yeah. So what I don't get, though, when they collect these royalties, like, what is the um, deal that they do? I read somewhere that a um, company, I mean, these businesses do like a blanket license to play, let's say, a nightclub. Like a nightclub, I think they're supposed to do a license to like a blanket license or whatever to play whatever music they want in their club for a set amount of time. And that payment is distributed based on whatever. Uh, and businesses, I don't know if they do like, let's say like a bunch of Hilton hotels or whatever, um, a bunch of Marshalls or Best Buys or something. I'm not sure how that's broken down. I read about it, but it actually is pretty interesting because I that has to be some serious calculations for the PROs to figure out what the business is paid over what time and then figure out distribute let's say you got seven songwriters and one song and three producers and one artist you know what I'm saying that it can get crazy and that's one song so it can get pretty crazy I was just thinking about it so anyway there you have it if you want to look around more um, check out um, you know just do some searching on YouTube of course or just Google it um, and there's a lot of sites like Taxi and these other sites I saw. Uh, these aren't looking familiar to me. But there's a lot of blogs out there and a lot of music sites that cover this in great detail. Just thought I'd give you an overview because I didn't know. And uh, there you have it. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you learned something, <laughs> I hope you did. And you got something out of this video. Uh, hit that sub button. Get them subs up. I'm getting there. And I appreciate everyone that sub. And if you like the video, just hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you want to lend a comment or anything I said that, you know, I, you had to add something or I said something wrong, <laughs> which I hope not. Um, yeah, just leave a comment or whatever. And, um... There's something else I had to tell you. I totally forgot what I had to tell you. Oh well, it'll it'll come. Oh, and if you have like a, an idea, if you had like something you want me to do a video on that's related to this or something music related or whatever, yeah, just let me know. Whatever. All right, cool. It's DJ Fanatic from DJ Fanatic Beats. I'm signing out. Have a great night. Peace.